Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Leap of Consciousness. I'm Annie Kalatkar, and with me today is my dear friend and colleague, Ashley Lee. And we are going to present some information about remote transmissions today and share with you the remote transmission that we have um, created specifically for helping people make a significant leap in their consciousness so that they can release really large quantities of fear with the help of Ashley and I working behind the scenes to support uh, each individual making the intended transformation that they desire. So um, Ashley and I thought we would uh, walk you through the 12 weeks and what we offer and the types of things that you will learn, the way that um, we, prepare the transmission so that you're able to receive it in the quiet of your home or whatever space you choose. It can be at the beach in your car, it could be anywhere in the world. And we have some unique technology we're gonna share with you today. And uh, Ashley, would you like to say a few words before we begin? I'd love to share. You know, remote transmissions and the opportunity for people to share consciousness and to transfer consciousness is what we really promote and support. And the reason why we are bringing this up in this way is to support everyone in connecting with their inner guidance. And that inner guidance, I mean, not that part of us that tells us what to do, when to do our homework, when to get up, when to go to school, when to brush our teeth, not that ego part of us that is goal or success oriented, I mean that creative part, that intuitive part, that spiritual aspect of ourselves that really is absent of all levels of fear, that has that opportunity to connect to our true nature of love and then emanate that out through our body into the world and create what it is we actually consciously choose to create versus responding to reacting to creating things from problems or systems that don't function or work for us. So that we're really focused on our pure hearted creativity, love, and choosing to manifest that in our physical world. That's beautiful. Ashley and I have been looking at an aspect of everyone's life, especially here in this realm we call earth, and that is about having preferences and how preferences victimize us, and how having a preference that is not met actually creates deeper victim wounding inside of us. And so with our inner guidance in conscious awareness of what we're doing, we actually have an easier time making that leap when we are focused on um, being you know, open to change, open to making those deeper transformational, um, you know, changes that eradicate the fear, eradicate the need to have um, preferences inside me centrism, right? That's, I want what I want, what I want, when I want, and with who I want. And when those demands and those expectations and those needs never get met, we end up feeling very victimized. And so as we get further and further out of those states, we actually experience deeper levels of peace. And then we bring those deeper levels of peace into our relationship with ourself and with others and with life circumstances and the environments that we create. So Ashley and I are going to share with you how we go about getting to that level of centeredness that we all want in our lives, okay? We're not separate from it, right, Ashley? <laughs> it's We're there. not separate from it. Yeah, it's there, it's been there all along. It's just that so much conflict has kind of pushed it out of our bodies and, uh, and our happiness feels like it's somewhere off to the side or it's just not available. And we always, you know, go looking outside of ourselves, where, where is it, where is it? And the truth is, it was always deep inside of you. But the conflict and the resulting discord, the energies of the conflict stayed inside your body, inside your mind or your mental awareness, inside your emotional field, your emotional body, and just kept it going 
what seemed like in perpetuity. It was never going to end. And so this is the type of program that actually helps people make a gigantic leap because we do a lot of the heavy lifting on the back end to support people making those changes so they can reclaim that sense of inner peace, which organically blossoms, right? It's the first day of spring. <laughs> and, and our peace just blossoms into happiness organically. It just gets expressed because we're not stressed anymore. We're not in a state of hypervigilance or reliving past traumas because it, it shifts and it shifts out of our awareness. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share screen. So oh, true too. So in our remote transmissions, like the one we're gonna share here called the leap of consciousness, what we do is each week for 12 weeks, we support everyone who joins our program with us. We go live on air with each other to support you all in where you are at in your life, in your home, meditating and connecting to your inner guidance. And as you connect to your inner guidance, we support. Wow. <laughs> I know. We are infinite beings. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <think so. laughs> that's an impressive uh, process. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. We're opening the parallel universes and the dimensions of our awareness. You showed it visually perfectly. Um, to share how we access our inner guidance. So what we do every Wednesday night for a half an hour is support you getting quiet in your mind, quieting the mind, quieting that critter brain, the monkey mind, the hamster wheel that keeps going around, our to-do list. We put that to rest for 30 minutes. And what we do is support you in focusing from decreased distractions in your home, in your environment, to being centered, grounded in your true nature of love. Grounded in that reality for you to deeply connect to your inner guidance, that part of you that is free of fear, that has not even a quantum particle of fear in it. Connecting to that highest, highest, highest elevated self of you that's streaming in pure love. And in that process, we as two advanced energy healers, quantum energy healers, are supporting on the quantum field through the process of supporting you connecting to a specific contextual framework that helps you seep in your creativity through your giftedness through the lens of your own specific and unique giftedness so we begin each week with these contextual frameworks to guide you through clearing out the consciousness challenges or the fear-based thinking processes that may have kept you stuck to opening your consciousness opening your awareness because ultimately, honestly, what gives us pure access to all infinite wisdom in this universe is our levels of fear. And so when we support you individually who has signed up for the program on the week that they're going through, you go through it successfully each week, every 12, through the 12 weeks for half an hour, each Wednesday evening, doesn't matter what time zone in you're in, we'll be connecting with you. But we're not going to be talking to you or videoing with you. It's you convening, connecting with your inner guidance, creating that inner connection. And then we support you releasing all fear based consciousness challenges to step into the empowered state that you are. So that creativity with your inner guidance flows through and to you. So that when you come out of that meditation in 30 minutes, what happens is you can free write, you can journal, you can talk about your creativity, about what you're moving through in your life and what it is you're actually choosing to create by releasing all conflicts, all thought forms of fear to illuminate that giftedness that you're here to bring to the world. Ah. 
I think I went off into another dimension listening to that because I was stepping into all the different remote transmission programs that we've done. And I was thinking about how this has just been a powerful uh, avenue to connect um, on so many different, you know, themes of consciousness. And yeah. this one has a very unique theme in that it's designed specifically to move us out of our, our fear-based thinking, where we stop making judgments, where we move into more neutral spaces. And with that, we start to um, express more of our giftedness, more of our innate love and peace. And it it's, it's just like turning radically um, 90 degrees or 180 degrees from the, the path that we were presently on. And Ashley and I have been doing these for going on seven years now. And we've done a multitude of programs for people. And this one, I think, is one of the um, most powerful first step programs that people can actually go through. And I think I'm just now realizing that, Ashley, that this one is is one of the, the foundational programs that I would recommend. So let's go look at week two. Um, yeah, so in week one, we, we literally support you in taking that commitment to, to, to leaping our consciousness into shifting out of fear basis and into love basis so that we create decisions and create solutions from our problems, from our fears, from our challenges to opportunities of love that support us, ourselves, each other, and the environments we choose to create together, either and individually and together, those environments, so that those environments exude the energy of love basis rather than a fear basis. That's very true. And I don't know that we mentioned this yet, but there is an email that comes to your inbox 24 hours before the meditation time. And it gives you the, the context for the meditation. And so in that email, you get to do a tiny bit of study and prepare yourself for what you're going to release that night so that we set the stage for your ongoing transformation. In week two, we explore uh, where is the source of the conflict and how do we begin the process of neutralizing the discord in our experience? And here is where we start looking at who is sourcing the fear, right? I always like to say we all have a quiver of arrows on our back. And when we can be very quick to pull one of those arrows out and load up our bow and shoot it at someone, and we might fire off a judgment in their direction. And so here's where we start recognizing there's a construct to a consciousness challenge. And so when we look at who is sourcing that fear, then we have greater or expanded awareness about how this conflict got even started and why it is ongoing. Why didn't it just dissipate and go away? So this is a very important step. And, and in the Leap of Consciousness here on Telegram, Many of you have already been learning about the five perspectives, and I posted a link just yesterday to our website where you can learn about the five perspectives through some very, um, you know, fun pictures. And look what's the following week, mastering those five perspectives so that we understand more and more about where that energy is going. Yeah, I look at it as like who is sourcing the energy? especially when it's conflictual or challenging or fear-based, what is, who's sourcing it? Then how are they sourcing it? What are they generating? What are they generating around that fear, around that conflict or that challenge? What kind of energy pattern is it? Then is it wrapped, like as it's sent out from the person, is it wrapped with an, with an emotion that's charging that field that you're receiving or that you're sending? And then what is the impact of the receiver? How are they receiving it? How are they responding? And what is going on? When we start to understand the perspectives, 
of, of am I sending discordant or negative or challenging or fearful energy to myself, meaning self judgment, or am I judging the other and am I sending out to them, me to you, or am I sending it, or are they sending it to me, so you to me, or am I sending it out to the world or a group, me to the world, or the world to me? Then I know how to navigate what's what, who's who, and how it's working so that I can create a much deeper conversation with myself and all others working through these challenges that we may be experiencing together. And then those challenges give us an opportunity to practice an empowerment called conflict resolution. It really is probably one of everyone's greatest superpower. And what's beautiful about it is every single person on this planet can do it. There's no exception here. And so it's not unique to Ashley and I, or to Myra, or Manuel, or Lyra. So we have this simple five-step process of acknowledging the conflict to make it more present. And so in this session, through your meditation state, you get to explore why you're not acknowledging your conflicts. And then we support the release of denial and other energetics that may be preventing you from actually acknowledging your conflicts. And then we go through those five steps and support your learning of how to go deep in each of those steps. And many times there are energetic obstacles to digesting, assimilating, integrating, all of those good words, uh, what each of those five steps is really all about. Because sometimes we have beliefs we didn't know we had. So for example, well, it's okay for me to get my uh, conflicts and discord cleaned up, but I'm not going to shine the light over there to that nasty person who yelled at me in the parking lot today. I'm not going to do step five, right? So why do we have that belief? Well, it's probably because we are judging them still that they disconnected from their true nature of love and that people who disconnect are not worthy of being witnessed to and shared that they can shine, uh, that we can shine our love over to the other party saying, hey, I am now out of competition with you. I'm no compete. And I'm also complete. I'm all done with this conflict. I will never again judge you. And I won't judge myself for having engaged with you in the supermarket parking lot, for example, right? And so we do, because we, we are our true nature's love, we wanna shine that light over. So what Ashley and I do on the back end is, is we tune into our group that we're working with and we sense what might need to be shifted and supported for release to allow for the five steps to actually um, go in deeper or have greater expression is a, probably a nicer way to say that. Ashley, you wanna take the precipice of creation? I'd love to. The, the precipice of creation is such a unique and amazing space. And it's unique in that we call that the zero point, the still point the space between spaces, the God space, the space where creation has not been created yet. It's the precipice of it. It's the pre-space before creation starts. When we start there, we start from our true nature of love, absent of fear. Our love just naturally flows through us and our giftedness, our innate giftedness comes through. And as we illuminate that space with our light, our essence, our life force energy, we then begin to naturally and organically express our giftedness from such a basis or a space or a framework that we can begin to share our, our heart centeredness. What really, really lights us up inside, what we get up in the morning for, why we're here, why we're embodied, why we're being a human being. All of those answers and opportunities start to come forward 
in what it is we choose to create. And so it's like starting with nothing hanging on in the back end, no ball and chain drudging me through this new creation I'm here to present and express to the world. That's what we do is help you feel that feeling, get to that space, understand that space and begin to work from that space. One of the things that I do, oh, I was going to add the family constellation element that uh, I have the ability as a facilitator to bring people into a role or into an environment to experience that space. And that's something that I support inside the transmission. Yes, it's beautiful. Okay, so wouldn't everybody love to experience their true nature? I know I love it when I'm in it. <laughs> right? That's called in the flow, right? In the flow, in the essence of who we truly are, feeling free to express all of our true nature out to the world. And a lot of times we could do that with a full blast, right? And we kind of blow everybody away. So what we do in this one, we, we break this one apart a little bit in this week so that you during your meditation have an idea and a construct is when I blow people away, how do I set that listening? How do I bring myself forward and expressing it into the environments that's appropriate? So we learn, we could learn to just spatter a little bit of our love in an environment that might be negative or highly charged or highly, you know, everybody's mad and upset. So how do we presence our true nature in that environment without getting triggered and upset ourselves? We could act like an air freshener and give a little dose of our true nature out to the world. And in that environment, then we're not blowing them away. We're just subtly supporting the atmosphere rising, supporting the environment rising in such a comfortable way that everybody feels good. And it's not about making somebody wrong because they're negative or they're in a challenge situation. So those are some of the attributes that we bring forward machine. We bring forward in the, into the awareness as we learn to master our energy. And that's really what we're here for, right? Mental mastery and emotional mastery. And that results in overall energy mastery, which is what you learn inside this channel. So all of this comes together to support navigating life with your inner guidance. And how do you do that? How do we remember to connect to our inner guidance? What is blocking your inner guidance? Where do you not trust your inner guidance? These are all the things that we go looking for to smooth out and clear up so that your experience with your inner guidance is more refined. It, you've cultivated a deeper relationship with your inner guidance. And that supports you in, in many, many ways, not just in navigating conflicts, but also with expressing your giftedness. And it creates discernment. I think that's really valuable today when everyone is being told, uh, you know, don't trust this person, don't trust that government, don't trust this company, and don't trust, don't trust messages everywhere. How do we actually know who and what to trust? Well, that's exactly and comes from yeah. your inner guidance. It sure does. And that discernment is so awesome too, because we don't recognize that we can have peace inside the midst of chaos. When we invite our highest, highest inner guidance down, when we're having a good time, when we're having a bad time, and we're having every time in between it, when we live and breathe our inner guidance absent of fear, we start to see through the veils of challenges that interfere with our discernment because fear is the very thing that interferes with our discernment ability to see what is true, what is honest, what is authentic, and what is appropriate for the next actions for us to take called navigating our life. And then what happens when we dial down the conflicts, we stop adding to conflicts in our lives, and we experience peace. Well, the opposite of peace, I mean, excuse me, the opposite of conflict or war is not peace, 
it's probably something closer to creation. And what happens inside creation is all of your empowered states, your giftedness starts to come out, right? And so this is where you get to connect to uh, empowered states that have either been suppressed because of conflicts or a lack of connection that was, um, yeah, the word obfuscated comes into my mind uh, that you couldn't notice because you had so much conflict going on. And now in a state of peace, you get to have reconnection. So this meditation night is always a fun one for people because they feel like they're getting gifts, that they're opening up gift packages and, and they get to play with the energy inside of those packages. And it's, it's really a marvelous experience. And then we come to self-love and how do we cultivate self-love on a daily basis? And it's really all of the preceding steps, isn't it, Ashley? It sure is. It's our, our ability to recognize when we're in a fear state, to know that we have the tools and the ability to move, move through those fear states to open up and to release our, we've already been practicing for seven weeks, eight weeks about releasing judgments and releasing our own self judgments that cultivated the challenges. And so now we're going to shift that cultivation of making challenges to actually cultivating self love and looking inside of ourselves, remembering that the love is already existent inside of ourselves. It's never absent from ourselves. Therefore, we don't have to go outside looking for love. Love is already present inside. And as we presence our love and share our love with others, it becomes easy, elegant, graceful, and non-diminutive. That means non-depleting. So that if we're, we're noticing that we're a giver, 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 we give everything away, what it is we want to do is receive love receive energy, receive resources from the universe and from each other. And as we feel abundantly full, then naturally and organically sharing occurs. We don't have to make it happen. We don't have to demand it or have something or someone tell us that we have to give in order to be good. Giving by sharing comes naturally. It sure does. And so pronoia is merely the opposite of paranoia. So if paranoia is the world is constantly out to get me, attack me, victimize me, pronoia is the opposite. The universe is rushing in to meet my every need before I even think about having a need because needs are based in separation. I feel separate from. And so with pronoia, we created a beautiful magnetic energy around ourselves whereby we start to attract the life that we intend and we create inner and outer environments that are rooted inside the space of peace and love and so this is again a really lovely uh, meditation to connect with as we get to experience pronoic universe and Ashley. it's because, it's because we can start to see paranoia and release paranoia because we've let go of needing to find love from outside of ourselves. So when our body and our being is very full of love and abundant with love, and we naturally share it and we're around others that naturally share it with us, and we're reciprocating this love back and forth very freely and very openly, not conditionally, like I gave you love, now you got to give me love. So there's not and there's no condition to it. What happens is pronoia as the awareness of pronoia that the world is conspiring to support me. We all of a sudden start to see the good in the world. We start to let go of what's negative. We start to recognize, oh, I can conflict resolve that. That's no big deal. We're just all going to let go of judgments. And that's really going to start to move those paranoid states of being away. And so then that's when pronoia really is capable of coming in when we've practiced deep self love and knowing that we don't have to search for love outside of ourselves. And then we work so we, on this, right? Is I know this one's a big one because see, 
what people don't realize sometimes is that their belief systems are formed from a multitude of stories and proof or evidence that what they see and believe or perceive is real. And so this is where beliefs have been reinforcing uh, your fear-based thoughts that something is real. And so as we move through uh, clearing all of the fears that uh, you know seem to bubble up or, or become available, for this big transformational shift for you. The restructuring of your beliefs kind of organically and naturally starts to occur because you went deep in the five steps of conflict resolution. And so during this 12 weeks, we really encourage people to, to notice where their conflicts are and conflict resolve what they're experiencing. Because by the time you get to week 11, the ability to go, oh, yes, I've already shifted some beliefs. I've already awakened to what the truth is. And now I'm ready to let go of the rest of the stories that may have been kind of hanging on like ribbons on a kite string, right? They just were along for the ride. And now we get to let that go. And so this is a very powerful experience to uh, create that, that expanded awareness that not everything I believe is true. And a lot of what I believe is all based in fear. And it's at that point where we get to say, oh my gosh, now I'm back to the precipice of creation. But because I've gone through the precipice of creation, I know how to bring myself into it and release my fears so I can create even deeper levels of peace and experience and choose, right? Through conscious choice, something different. And that it's something so different is, go for it, Ashley. Well, living spiritually sovereign is a unique experience. We aren't really used to it in our everyday lives. And what we mean by that is, and, I, and, and we mean really spiritual, living spiritually sovereign for eternity, forever. Because when you're able to release your consciousness challenges, in your DNA, on your biological lineage, from your family. Then also your spiritual lineage, your spiritual DNA, you get to release that too, of patterns and situations and belief systems you brought in from before this incarnation. And that's what really gets illuminates opportunities on a massive scale to support our own lives and the lives of our descendants, those that come after us. And we get to open that energy up so that those belief patterns no longer run our lives. Like work is hard. Money doesn't fall from trees. I can't do that. I doubt myself. I need other people to value me. All of these different things start to uh, diminish and move through. And when we can live spiritually sovereign, we're no longer hooked with our preferences. We're no longer a victim to our world and our society. And that's where we really open up that. You can see after 11 weeks prior to connecting with your higher, higher inner self, that part of you that's free of conflict, free of fear and open to love, really supports this whole roadway of you painting your future walking forward. Uh, this is just a video that we had with one of our colleagues in England that's on the website that we invite you to listen to. And yes. there's additional information that you can find on the website, including how to enroll in this program. Okay. Anything on here you want to cover, Ashley? Because I'm going to stop sharing so we can take questions. Sounds perfect. Okay, let's see if I can navigate. There we go. I'll let you um, see if there's anyone who wants to unmute their microphone. And yes. share with any questions about our Leap of Consciousness program and where we're guiding the world to experience their own inner guidance and their inner navigation system. Okay, so anybody that has a question, just click the button to put your hand up, and I will unmute you. 
I'm trying to reshape my my windows. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd like to add, Ashley, before we close the video? Well, I'd love to share with everyone to take this moment as whether you join our program or you choose to meditate on your own, I invite you to do that as often as possible because the more that you're able to clear your mind of got to figure it out and turning, 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 working in the fear basis, the more you'll create decisions and solutions from that fear. So we invite you to really let go of that fear, walk through that fear by letting go of it, acknowledging it, and then moving through to the other side of that. The other side of that is the emancipated state is the state of empowerment, is the state that you can reach. Everyone has the capacity to reach it. I even think newborns and kids in utero that are that are growing their bodies inside their mom's womb that has the opportunity to really shift and, and support their own self-healing from within. And that's really what we support is emancipating yourself so that you're able to be your true gifted expressing self in the world, finding, creating joy with every breath you take in life. And that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you in our program and here in our Telegram channel, Leap of Consciousness. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.